my best friend to 23 She left her body and hovered above me I saw no shadow, I looked around Searched every building and home that I found I saw no shadow, but felt the glow The warmth inside me kept me afloat It felt like heaven, I found my bones It gave me comfort when I feel alone You're gone, I'm alone I guess it's time to get better Through the pain, I will go alone If I fall best friend to 23 she left her body and hovered above me <laughs> Best friend to 23. I heard the heavens crying above me. They gained an angel. I lost a friend. I felt like dying again and again. I went through hell instead of death. But I keep fighting with each living breath. I saw no way out from where I stood. Felt like the fire had burned me for now. Yeah, you're gone. I'm alone. I guess it's Time to get better Through the pain I will go alone If I fall your self-righteous symphony I would rather let this go than to bring it up again but 
What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to another Thursday night with us, your friends, and you're our friends, and we're so excited. This is the Burley Fishing Podcast. We are live. I've got my co-host, Paul, here, <coughs> and I'm totally going to die. <coughs> Time out. And we're fine. Paul, take over. <laughs> well, well, okay, no, we're, we're fine. I smoked, a, oh, I, back. I smoked a pack before uh, the show. Sorry, my bad. Uh, <laughs> totally, like, just drank my beer down the wrong pipe. <laughs> What a way to start the show off. All right, guys, so I got my co-host Paul here. We also have a very special guest for you tonight who uh, is allegedly going to try and, and I didn't even tell him this before the show, uh, and I don't know if he watches the show, so I don't know if he knows this. He might try to convert me from Z-Man Plastics uh, over to Nico Bates. I'm going to see if he gets uh, excited about that. But um, yeah, you guys know, we got the shark deucers in the house, and uh, we love our shark deuce. It catches us lots of fish, but we've got Scott Barrett. Who is the guy? I, I believe that's your official title, correct, Scott? At Nico Bates? The guy, yes, I'm the guy. I, the guy. Yes. Capital T, capital H, capital E, guy. Not yeah. not just well, the guy. Underscore, it's, like the guy. it's at T H E underscore G U Y. He is the guy for Nico Bates. So Scott, how you doing tonight? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely, man. We're excited for tonight. I'm excited to hear a lot about the baits that you guys are offering. I see a whole bunch, a plethora, if you will, behind you there, including a crab, uh, oh, yeah. which is intriguing. No, we... We're gonna we're gonna talk about that, I'm sure. And you guys offer like a nice variety of baits, tons of different colors, tons of different varieties. We've gotten a chance to fish really just the craw, but I think I think Chat's gonna like it. So Chat, if you got questions tonight for Scott, be sure to throw them out at us. And if you want to support the show, we appreciate you guys whenever you do this, uh, you can super chat. So it's a little option you got when you click in your chat. And uh, feel free to throw us anything that helps us, you know, buy supplies for the show. We appreciate you guys very much. Uh, we do have a new member shout out to throw out as well. So Big Diaz, who just, I think it's Big Diaz Hooked is the full name, but uh, just joined the Snorlax crew, actually messaged me the other day. So thank you, sir. Thank you for joining. Glad to have you. Welcome to the Snorlax crew. We can't wait to see you at the next Members Only Live. And, of course, we'll be dropping you on Members Only content whenever we can. If you guys want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel, smash the like, ring the notification bell, and then follow us at all the places, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all those things. We'll start stepping up our TikTok and Instagram Reels game coming here pretty soon because it's summertime. we got lots of things to, to film and fish to catch and all those things. All right, I'm going to take a sip and fix my respiratory system. Maybe. Go ahead. Maybe keep all the liquid, you know, out of your lungs on that one. Which one? Which is there? There's two <laughs> yeah, pipes. which pipe? Is it this one? All right. <laughs> all right. So uh, as always, we're going to kick us off with the Q of the D. Again, this question, there's no wrong answer. There are less right unless, unless you're wrong. wrong answers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but this one's easy. So my and, and Scott, we I know that you have a, a fishing background. So this one is going to be good for you. And this is we always ask people, like, what's your favorite color? Like, what's your favorite pattern or whatever? Now I want to ask you, what is your least favorite color of soft plastic? And it could be hard bait too. I'll open it up to anything. But what is, whenever you see color, you know, this color, you just like throw it back in the box. You're like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm not going to fish it. Uh, for, for me, it's probably orange. Orange? Yeah. Like neon, like fire tiger, like orange or orange, like the rusty brown kind of orange? Um, well, more of the brighter orange. Mm. Um, you know, I'm I'm located in Virginia, and I do a lot of my uh, testing on the Shenandoah River up in the in the Blue Ridge Mountains, and uh, that particular area where I go, orange is always is is, is a poor color for me. You know, always always gets less production, and uh, and I've always felt I haven't done as good on it as as I should. But but I also know that it differs by region. So. It does. There's not, like I said, there are less right and wrong answers. There's no wrong ones. True. I have, yeah. an, I have an orange crankbait that when I lost it, I wanted to cry because yep. it was the only, it was the only deep diver that I could like get anything on for like years. Yep. But uh, Jeff, what about you? What's your least favorite? Man, that is, uh, that's a tough one because I, I mean, I just kind of don't fish them and then I don't think about them so I don't know I guess I don't throw very many like just brown or like oh. not too many well yeah brown <laughs> I know but it's kind of weird because there's, well, there's a couple well, different shades yeah. of brown 
There's yeah. there's like there's there's dark brown and then there's like frog brown, but then there's like tea brown. You know what I mean? It's got yeah. like a, a little more white in it, and it's like kind of just like uh, it's almost like mud colored, yeah. like that mud colored brown. That one I never fish because whenever it's that muddy, where I would maybe mm-hmm. throw that, I usually end up going black instead. Right. And so like I feel, or, but you know what? That what was that copper uh, bait that I was throwing from Mr. Bass? Uh, the yammy fish. The that yammy, yammy fish. The yeah. yammy fish in that brown, which I yeah. would typically would never grab. I yeah. slammed on it, and now I'm like, now I'm eyeballing like anything that's like. Light brown. Well, Any, it, anything it, that's like tan, I'm like. It was mm-hmm. more. It was more green yeah, protein like with that. copper flake. Yeah, we've we've got a we've got that color of helper mite. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah nice. I don't know, man. Like I fish a lot of colors. I'm not. I'm not. I don't know. I'm throwing brown out there because I'm just not sure like what color I don't fish. Like what? Name one. What? What? Do, what? All right. So you're saying that color, like the. That's a good. That was a good one. I was thinking about it. Someone just said yellow, and I think like actual yeah. like highlighter yellow is a color that I never yeah. ever grab. Right. I only so, have like maybe one or two baits with any just right. yellow, not chartreuse, totally different yellow. No, we just had a subscriber send us like he like homemade, super salty. You guys remember it from the subscriber unboxing recently? It was all plastics. I got that episode. But yeah, yellow senkos, like yellow stickworms, and uh, he like self salted them. There's just like a bag of salt, and uh, yeah, I was like yellow stickworms, huh? Because yeah, I've never thrown that. So I guess that that was like my backup color too. I was gonna say yellow, but I don't know, man. That's uh, it's an it's a hard question. question. It really I, is. I was not I throw almost to anything. <laughs> All right, All right, so. Let's get into so I want to do we did we did a little bit of an introduction we, we talked kind of about like uh, uh, you know we're gonna get a little bit more into sort of what you do with Nico and some of those things what's like the elevator pitch for like Nico Bates sort of like if you had you know three sentences to just sort of like give someone a shot in the arm in terms of like what Nico Bates is all about or is it Nico fishing or is it Nico Bates I don't know because you guys are like a division right oh well yeah I mean the the actual Nico name is, in Japanese is, gets kind of complicated and um, <laughs> so uh, uh, you know we we probably didn't think too far ahead sometimes <laughs> so we have so we have Nico fishing is the website and uh, our Instagram was Nico Bates and you know you get to a point where they're difficult to change now. Um, so <laughs> yeah. Facebook is Nico fishing baits. So, <laughs> you know, just look up Nico and fishing or Nico and baits and you'll find us. But, um, um, no, I mean, the elevator pitch, I, I guess, is that, you know, we make what I, what I consider the, probably the, the highest quality, probably the most effective, the most durable, uh, baits on the market. And, and they, and they provide a, a tremendous amount of value that, a lot of people often don't think about, um, you know, the baits last a long time. You know, a pack of Helger mites for me would last probably a thousand fish. And, um, you know, you can, you, you save a lot of money and, you know, how much, what is the value of a fish? I mean, how much money do you spend going fishing? And um, uh, we don't talk about that. Yeah. On the show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's the value of a fish? What's the value of a good time? And what's the value of not having to spit goats back to the store or, you know, or, you know, the, the baits last, you, you save space in your tackle box, you, you have space in your kayak, um, you know, you don't have to change out baits all the time, you're not polluting. So, I mean, there's a whole lot, there's a ton of things that we do. But the number one thing that we do is we make really, really effective baits. And uh, they'll make you feel like a better fisherman. That's like the, well, the that's what, a that's, there's a sales pitch right there. I'm officially hooked. Now, yeah. I know we've got Adam from Everything Outdoors, and, and he's called out a couple times just in the chat, and I've I've seen him fish this stuff all the time, uh, yeah. Fish and Nico, and he called out, like, you know, uh, right up there with Z-Man, if not better, in terms of durability. And that's not... I, I honestly, mean, who else can say that? If I, if I could have a thousand fish on one bait, that would be Z-Man. Because, like, we know each... Uh, so we... we we'll, we'll just, like, give you the spiel real quick. Like, we, we have a membership level of our YouTube channel, which is called The Shard Deucers, and it's named after what currently holds one of my favorite spots uh, of lures, which is the Z-Man Copper Truce. It's the Finesse TRD, which you're probably familiar with as, like, one of the competitors out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're a little Nedrig bait, right? And, yep. I mean, you can catch... I've caught 50 
plus in a day on that and like not quite changed it, but they definitely still tear. So, I mean, I haven't been able to do like a head to head with like the Helgramite or uh, the Craw or something like that uh, would be yeah, fun video. What do you guys think? Would that be a fun video? That could be That's cool. A, and then it's maybe gonna, uh, it's going to take hard, you a yeah. while. It's, it's <laughs> going to what? That. I said it's going to take you a while. Good. <laughs> Fine by me. <laughs> yeah, go to, okay. We'll go to we'll go to a honey hole and we'll just catch I, until one of the baits breaks. <laughs> I just love it though, because we we make a joke, right? And and uh, you know some of the jokes we talk about with with baits that are like at that level of durability is like I have I have a, I have some packs where I, I have I can't tell you the last time I went and gone and bought them. Yeah. Because I'm still running like the first one that I ever got. I've only lost like four out of the ten that come with it, and I'm like. Yeah, I'm not like I'm not even joking. Like I still yeah. I got one Ned box of these things and I I have not refilled it since I made that box. Like that's it. Um which I that you you talked about like okay, we, what's the value of a good time? Well, I can tell you it's like 9 bucks and that's one pack and it's going to last me like 2 years. That's it's awesome. Yeah, so, Chris Chris Hooks, I I can pronounce it now. Uh a lot of people helped me out on the video. You put in the phonetics and then also Scott said it a bunch of times before we the, started. So The Helgramite <laughs> The Helgramite. <laughs> okay, well, I like that we went Helgramite. So one of the questions I had before, well, okay, before I get to that question, do, you talked about like being like uh, the, the like, sort, of, sort of like the guy uh, for for Nico Bates right now. Uh, sort of, what's your, you know, that being your title, what fits underneath that? Because uh, you, you're clearly you're, you, you talked about uh, being in Virginia. Um, you know, what is what is sort of like what, what is it that you do for for North America? Because just to be you know put it out there, um, Nico Bates from Japan, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So Nico's in Japan. Um, so I used to live in Japan, live there for uh, quite some time and I met them there and I actually started helping them in Japan. Uh, you try and, you know, I was really, really impressed with what I saw and I actually met them before they released their very first bait. Um, I got to meet them uh, at a trade show when they were just showing what they were doing. Um, but uh, shortly after that, I was in the 2011 earthquake, tsunami, and radiation, and uh, so that kind of uh, wiped me out business-wise as well. So that, you know, so I came back to the U.S. Wow. and uh, basically just started from zero with nothing, no no industry, none of no industry experience here in the U.S. Um, never designed a bait before, um, and just. Uh, just started from scratch, and uh, you know I hit a, I hit a lot of brick walls. Uh, you know it's it's a very difficult industry, and so basically what I do now is a little bit of everything. From I mean I guess my title would be like North American sales manager, but I I do bait design, I do testing, I do marketing, I do. I handle all of the retailers. I handle the retail trade. I do the importing. I do every, absolutely everything. So it's you're a, the, the guy. You're a lot of guys. <laughs> Holy Your smokes. hat was pretty tall. I was wondering like how many hats you were wearing. <laughs> <laughs> so that, the better question, Paul, would have been, uh, Scott, what don't you do? <laughs> well, I mean, I, you know, I, and I can, I can commiserate. I find myself in situations like that where you sort of feel like, okay, I'll take this on. Right. And, and you don't know what it could be. And then you start discovering what it could be. And then it becomes kind of what you think it could be. And all of a sudden you find all these other planets where you can like put your little hands and like do all this other work. Yeah. I mean, the more, you know, about Nico, the more that you'll get into it and be very dedicated to them. And I was, but I, to be quite honest, I had no idea how difficult this really was to, you know, establish a brand, establish a business in the U S from zero. And, yeah. uh, and that's, that's, if I had known how challenging it was, I might've looked at some other options, but, uh, <laughs> but, but, but to be honest, you know, Nico, the more I work with it, the more, the, with the product, the more I fish it, the more I hear from people who fish it. Um, you know, we have a tremendous amount of uh, fans and they're very extremely loyal. Um, you know, and, uh, uh, they're that they're that way for a reason, you know. We're, we we do a lot of good things. We try. You're gonna make me look like a good fisherman. It better be a damn good bait. I mean, so, that's the best thing ever. <laughs> yeah. So what a, what uh, we a had challenge, a too. We yeah. Good luck. <laughs> we had a question come in. Uh, Scott, what's your number one selling bait? Is is it the Helgramite? It is the Helgramite. Yes. Ooh, from Chris Shu. What's up, Chris Shu? Good question. So you know, here's the thing about Helgramite. This is actually one of the other things that drew me to you guys because you know the Helgramite pops up in a lot of your guys' advertising. You see photos of it, and you know yeah. some of the people who are repping for you are always fishing the Helgramite. 
And I always had that the uh, the Helgramite Hardbait from uh, Rebel. Yep. And and I was all you know that was kind of like one of my go tos that and the Rebel Crawl were like always my go tos. Like I always had exposure to a Helgramite. And then when I kind of like started talking to other people about fishing, and no one knew no one knew what I was talking about. And I'd show it to them, and they'd be like. You look stupid. Like, why are you, why are you fishing this? But like, I to me it was normal and it, I knew it worked, so it was great. And so I'm also like, you know, sort of like the old guy in the room. Like, I use all the old style baits and everyone makes fun of me for it. But like to me, it's a no brainer. I mean, it's it's kind of like it's it's always been good. Um, and I, when I saw that you guys had a Helgerman, it was kind of like one of your top options. I was like, these dudes are doing this is my brand they're they're getting you're getting at the sweet spot for me yeah so i grew up fishing and uh you know my fondest memories are fishing on the you know the shenandoah river of virginia um lots of helgramites there and uh you know i i fish those same rebel crawls and, and the same you know rebel helgramite um but you know working with nico when we when we had a great product um the um, never trying to get working, him to pack Scott. like a thousand boxes. Yeah, and, and, and that, that, that was Japan calling right now from Nico. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> if, if there's, tell you, there's no rest. Um, like Scott, we're gonna need you to make us uh, ten thousand more crabs, please. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. What do you What do you think about squids? We could use some squid baits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but for, for the for the Helgramite, we we have baits that were that are amazing that catch a catch a ton of fish. Um, but they were not the baits that people would look to buy. And so I looked around and basically there was really no good Helgramite bait, that, or I didn't think so. I thought mm -hmm. that was a huge gap in the market. And I grew up fishing. I, I, I fished, the plastic Helgramites have been around for, you know, 40 years probably. And, you know, I fished them a long time ago, but they were just never really any good Helgramite bait. So we set out to design the best one there is. And, uh, we actually spent I actually spent two years on it. That was the very first bait I designed, wow. and so, you know, there was a lot of things we didn't have confidence on because it's your first time. But you know, I fished yeah. it for two years. I, I put it out in Virginia, and, and people were, uh, yeah, I, I I had people calling me from all over the country asking about the Helgramite. I had no idea how they got my name or, or where they had heard about it. Um, but uh, it did really well. And then uh, I guess the the last time I the last the last day of testing was I caught 100 pounds of smallmouth on one one Helgramite on one day, and I said I think we've got it good, so <laughs> let's go with this version of it, and that's the version we have now. Well, our, our chat our chat would really like Paul to eat a Helgramite, and uh, Jay Adams brings up a great point: if you just slather it in mayo, it's probably going to go down good. You'd have a lot better luck. Just some red hot or raw jalapenos. I mean, I'm just saying. Tony Saturies. All Tony Saturies. It doesn't. Just, even if it sucks, it doesn't have to suck. <laughs> even if it sucks. <laughs> I love it. That's what awesome. a great slogan. Um, so what are um, tell me a little. What are the things that kind of one of the the main reasons that I, I wanted to talk to you guys was uh, this came up on an old, on, on one of our shows maybe three four weeks ago, um, talking about you know what what baits out there are like more on like the um the eco-friendly side, the fish, you know, safe for fish side. Um, because to me, you know, it, we all, it, we all like fishing. Right. And I don't think anyone can look at fishing and be like, Oh, that's a cool thing for fish. Like it's not a good thing for like that individual fish that you got, that you caught. It's good for all fish, like the sum total, like, you know, bass, yeah. like it's good for all of the bass and the future bass and all that. But like that one fish that got jacked in the face by your jig is not having any fun. Right. And, you know, it stresses them out. And it's not a good experience. And we're out here on top of doing all that to the fish that we, you know, we love. We're also pumping them full of eight inch, you know, Senkos that that when, when they swallow and they turn to cement and they can't even pass them. Um, and then everything that you break off, because we all know that the line's the weak point, that all stays in the water. Like we're not doing good things. So, you know, uh, I just think that this is a really, really, I, I kind of want you to talk about some of the, the, the benefits of, of what Nico does that, that pretty much not many other bait companies are out here doing. Um, well, Nico uses a completely different kind of plastic, first of all. So it, it's very unlike the ordinary plastic. So, um, you know, ordinary plastics contain plastisol, um, plastisol, acts as an endocrine disruptor. So 
you know, it, it changes, it is it, very harmful to males of everything. Um, harmful to people as well. When you touch them and handle them, it goes through your skin. It, it, it disrupts a lot of the signals and communication within your body. Um, so the, the other thing is if you burn them, you get dioxin. And if, if, you, if you know what dioxin is, then, you know, you know how scary that really is. I mean, I think in New York, they shut down an entire town because of dioxin uh, poisoning and the mm -hmm. people with cancer and dying. So the traditional plastics are actually have a lot of really bad stuff in them. And that's why in certain countries and certain areas of the world, they're actually being banned um, because they are so harmful and they're very harmful to men and boys, especially. Um, Which what, like 80% of the fishing industry is men? Well, well, yeah. And, and so, um, you know, what they do for the fish, for example, these, these hormones, um, you know, you'll get fish that can't reproduce because they don't, they haven't sexually developed properly. They don't know whether they're a man or a woman and they get confused. And, and as you can see, even in today's society, that seems to be, per, you know, percolating up to, up to a human level as well. And if you actually go to the science, and I used to work for the pharmaceutical industry, so I studied a lot of this, um, you know, there's, there's a lot there that would make a, a very interesting, but very scary, you know, podcast as well. Um, but Nico set out to create the the most environmentally friendly, get as close to a zero footprint product as you can possibly get. Um, the initial versions were biodegradable, um, and so the the baits contain the, it's a it's a medical food grade plastic. There is nothing in these baits that will cause any harm to anything at any time. You could eat well. This is not official, so don't do this. I mean, you could eat them. You could put them in your body. Um, you could smoke them. There's nothing. There, they will not generate anything harmful and toxic. Um, even the colors and the scents are all food-grade material. And so there's absolutely nothing in here that will do any harm at all. The other, the other thing is, is that the baits will never harden. So, you know, you hear about fish having cinco's in them and stuff like that. Um, so a lot of times, especially the ones that have salt in them, the, the baits will harden and swell and, uh, the fish are unable to maneuver. They cannot, they cannot, you know, catch prey or they can't escape predators. Um, they're also being, uh, bombarded with, uh, you know, these hormones and toxic chemicals at the same time. And when then they die, another fish will pick it up uh, and it continues on through the forever. Um, but Nico's product will remain soft and they float. So there's, there's two things. So number one, um, they remain soft. They're never, they're never going to harm anything. Even if the fish or the animal can't get rid of the bait, it's not going to inhibit their movements. They'll be fine. And they're not going to be poisoned at the same time. And in fact, Nico baits contain a lot of organic material. They would probably partially digest some of it over time. Um, the other thing is they're, they're, they're sensitive to UV. So if you lose a, a bait and, and you know, worldwide, Nico is stronger in salt water than they are fresh water. Here in North America, it's, it, we do mostly fresh water. Um, and so if the baits are floating in the ocean, they're getting, they're constantly being broken down. Um, if a sea turtle comes up and eats them, it'll just pass very easily. It won't cause any harm. If, a, if, a, if an albatross picks it up, same thing. Um, so there's really, really no damage and they'll break down. And there's even microbes that will eat this particular variety of plastic. Um, still takes time, you know, it's not going to disappear in a year or two, but it will harmlessly disappear completely over time. Wow. And, you know, and I think you made a great point. I mean, you're, you're being fully transparent. Like it's not gonna, this is not something that like, if you threw it out in your yard, it'd be gone tomorrow. Like that's not the, that's not the deal. We're talking, it's, it's 2021, right? And, <clears throat> you know, the, you know. It is. Well, and I mean, I think knowing that knowing that where we are today, where if you looked at the market and you said, OK, well, which one of the how many of the plastics that you see on the sh you know on the shelf of the wall or whatever, when you go to your store to or you're looking online, how many of these would go away ever? And the list would, you know, not ever, yeah. but you see like within the next decade. Right. What, oh, well, what would they be? It'd be be none of them in the next decade. It'd be it'd be unbelievable. You'd be like, okay, well, like these are all gonna still be here. I gotta leave this pack out and come get it when I'm 50, and it'll still be here. <laughs> and it's like, I, I, mean, I guess my this big, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> six foot senko. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I just think you know, you, 
the, it's not, the idea is not that I expect everyone to make a perfect bait that the second it touches the water and it's not fishing, then it's gone and it's become oxygen. Like that's not, I'm, that's not a level of expectation I don't think is realistic. But the idea that you say like, okay, this is where most of the industry is. And, you know, it, anglers like your when you buy your fishing license, when, when you go buy tackle, when you go buy gear, and if you're a hunter, same thing, you are, you are contrib- you're doing a, you may not even know, but you are contributing to like the conservation platforms yeah. within the state that you live in, right? right? This is America, right? It's different than the rest of the world. In America, that's how it works. And, and, and you're unwittingly doing like a great thing. And we're kind of like using our own like selfish desires against ourselves. Like, I want to go catch bass. I want to go catch a 10 pounder. I'm going to keep trying to do that for the rest of my life, whatever, right? And I have to go buy a license to do that. And the license contributes to the fact that like the state's going to go like put in, you know, buy water, buy land, buy access, like blah, 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 blah. Like that's a great thing. But at the same time, I'm kind of working against myself because everything that I buy that I leave in the water is bad for the water. So to take a step in the right direction and be like, you know what, maybe we can make plastics that are actually not as bad for the water. Right. And then, like I said, it's 2021 today when it's 2031, maybe we do have a plastic that every time a fish eats it, it just like knows that, okay, now I can just disintegrate and become a cheeseburger for that bass. Or like, I'm going to turn myself (laughs) into a minnow, an actual minnow. Wonderful. (laughs) Like, I don't know, but you get what I'm saying though. Like there's, there's nothing that says we can't get there sometime, but you can't get there, right? You can't make a great plastic that is much better for the environment without making one that is like 10 steps better for the environment and for the fish that are eating it. Especially if you're going to go out there with a three quarter ounce jig and jack its face right over the side of your boat, you know? You know, well, life happens at the margin. And, uh, you know, it's, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna marginally get better and better, but, uh, to be quite honest, I mean, this is my honest opinion. I think Nico is leaps and bounds ahead of everybody as far as what goes into these baits. I mean, it's very difficult. You know, the machinery is unique. Um, the material is unique. It's a very difficult to work with plastic. You know, it's easy to come up with a variation of what we're doing, but you're going to be sacrificing um, the hardness or softness, the movement, the flexibility. You're going to be you're going to be sacrificing the how it tears or how it, how resilient it's going to be, um, and you're going to sacrifice the performance of that plastic. And that performance is what brings people happiness. Well, you know, <laughs> well by uh, happiness you mean big old giant fish. smallmouth. Well, and yeah, I mean, we, we, created, we created something that, you know, performs like you would want it to perform. Sure. And that's very difficult to do. So um, when you, we were, yeah, we were talking about this about the show. You're like, this is a, this is the plastic that like does all the things that you want a plastic to do. Super things. durable, super stretchy, better for the environment, better for the fish. Absolutely. And you just, and it works and it, it fishes yep. well. Like those yep. are the, <laughs> those are all the things that I wanted when I made my list of what I was going to go to the store it, and go get. That's what I was for looking your, for. For your perfect date. The, that's yeah. the list you made. <laughs> and they're scented too. And they're scented. Think which we're, scent, so, you know. we're, we're definitely going to talk about that. All right. So I, I got, a, I got a bone to pick slash question here slash Uh-oh. debate to, to bring up, which of course had to happen. So I told you, I fished the the Z-Man, the Copper Truce is like my favorite bait to throw around. I love that Ned rig. Uh, what do you got for me, Scott? Like, t- talk to me about, I'm hearing what you're saying. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Convert me from Z-Man. Like, why should I switch over? Because Elastec's pretty durable, too. So what, what would make me go over to your baits versus Z-Man? Because I think that's what the people want to know for sure well, as well. Well, I mean, that's, you know, as 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 you know because i'm like the nico guy it, it's very difficult for me to you know to put any other company in you know a direct comparison i i will, sure. tell, I will just tell you what i think about nico and you know, allow people to make their own comparisons um, That's fair. uh you know if if you were talking about durability um based on my experience and what people tell me fr- from their experiences um you know, I think our durability is is, is unmatched, um, and I think the main thing is, is that really want to distinguish is we just have different baits. We just do our own thing, and uh, we have our own designs. We don't really, you know, be I'm I'm, you know, for for designs in the U.S. market, I have I have my hands on every one of them, and uh, I can honestly tell everybody that I don't look to other people. Um, I just look, I just have a concept and, and I just, I, I, 
when I'm working on a bait, I do not work. I do not look at any other person's bait. Um, I, I can tell that from looking at your baits, just from what I've seen on social media. Like I don't see the crossovers there. So I, I really appreciate that. And I also got to say between the two, like your paddle tail is the like, winnow, right? Yeah. yeah. The winnow. Yeah. That's, the winnow what I was, I, that's where I was going. Ridiculous. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. To, to be upfront, you know, I had some help on the winnow then I had some help on the crawl. It's but, okay. Uh, I you get mean, help with everything. You mean, you, you, you asked Siri, like, what, what, are, what are the best lengths for a paddle tail plastic, Siri? That's all you did. <laughs> you did the rest on your yellow notepad and, and graph paper. It's fantastic. No, I really like that bait. I think it looks really good. Uh, the window is really, really special. We, we put a lot into that. Um, and for maybe, I'll hold this up. I'm not sure if it's focusing or not. If anybody can see that. Oh, I, I guess can yeah, yeah. see it. It, it, it's ridged, uh, so it's like a fat body, like ridged bait. Yeah. So think, and um, it's got some sick action. And it's got yeah, that Oh, yeah, the action is um, absolutely stunning. It's, uh, well, first of all, what people are going to notice the first when they first look at it is going to notice the ribs. Um, yeah. We have, uh, if you notice at the front there, we have a zigzag ridges. And they huh. zigzag all the way through. And then they, oh, trans yeah. they transition to smooth at the end. Yeah. And so what we did there was, um, you know, when you're fishing a bait, you know, if you understand how fish, well, they don't think how they, how they react and how they respond, you know, so, yeah. um, you know, the window is designed to, to hit every frequency. So these ridges, first of all, they're very soft, so they will flex as well. So that, that gives yeah. a better signal to the fish, a, a kind of a, a live bait type of action and, and sens right. sensory uh, action, I guess. But the, the, the ribs create a, a wide spectrum of, of, of vibration. So whatever the fish are keyed in on, it's very likely you're going to hit one of them. And, yeah. and so everybody else is straight. In, in fact, I'll tell you a little quick story. Um, this bait took us a long time to make. Um, the reason is because this bait cannot be made with regular mold technology. So are the ridges? The ridges. You, you cannot wow. make a mold with these ridges. Uh, in a normal fashion. So, so Nico actually had to go out into a variety of different high-tech industries to figure this out, how to get this mold made. Um, and uh, so it was a, it, it turned out to be quite an expensive venture, <laughs> but uh, we got it done because we want to be, we have a passion. We want to be number one in, in what we do. And yeah. so the other cool things about the, um, you'll notice, I mean, it, it, it's got a kind of a deeper belly at the front yeah. and others. Yeah. Um, and, there, and there's reasons for that too. I mean, if you think about, you know, the the wild and animals in the wild, where's all the nutrition, right? The yeah. fish, know that's right, they know that. And so we, we have a little, a little bit of a wider gullet there than normal. Cool. Uh, we have a, we have a very unique profile. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of like a somewhat triangular profile. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I can't really see on the, the thing here, but it's this this profile Same. helps provide um, some stability while you, you know, and it kind of um it almost gives it kind of like a, a keel type of action or a function. Nice. I say. So the bait has it's designed for a very you can you can slow return. I, there's people Nico rigging these. Um, just because it'll, it'll pull to. up and the tail's moving around. Um, so the, it's got three actions that, you know, obviously the paddle tail is moving. Yeah. Uh, it, um, it also, it's really cool. It has like a snake-like action. The bait actually goes like this. Nice. At the same time, it has a roll every now and then. It's got a, it's got a, lo a high, uh, a long frequency roll. So, um, those three actions happen simultaneously at the same time the ribs are moving in the water because they're thin and soft. Um, so it provides a huge range of signals that fish will pick up on and think that's a meal. And, uh, you know, in, in testing, in, in I, I've gotten a lot of feedback where people are saying, you know, they, you know, the baits are, are pricier than other baits. So they said, we're going to give it a try. And, and everybody comes back for more. Um, they're catching fish, like in tournaments, they're catching fish after places have already been hit. Um, they, uh, I've had people say that they can't get 
fish, when nothing's working, none of the other swim baits are working, I'll put this on and this, this bait will get attention where nothing else will. And uh, there's a reason for, you know, we put a lot into that and mm. we put even little, this tiny, tiny little details. I mean, we have uh, a little markers on there for your hooks to help you get your hook straight. Um, you can text close your hook. We got a little slot in the ridges here. Um, the head is designed. So if you chop it off, it's, it, the size there is going to be really, it's going to be a nice fit for a, a wide variety of, uh, of, of heads. Um, you know, even, even the tail has a little bit of, um, little di you know, hash marks and even the little base of the tail has marks. They're all there for a reason. And, you know, that's, it's all to help tell the fish that come and get it. And so it's like is the wow. easiest way to rig that like a like a standard jig like a like a fish head type jig you know personally i just put them on jig heads most of the time yeah, yeah. um yeah. but that's kind of a, that's kind of a function of where i get to fish gotcha um, so you know a lot of people will put them on the uh the, you know the, the belly weighted hooks yeah you know, and and then some people chop the heads off and put them on you know like swim you know, swim the swim jig yeah swim jigs yeah i think you guys you, you posted on your social media maybe today or the other day like on a net head as well because you have three sizes of this don't you no no for the no we we only have one size of the winnow it's uh it's, okay. a, it's a 95 millimeter or 3.75 inches okay that's a good size i like that that's like the, the most do it all i you yeah. know and I, I, if i had had this when i started fishing like i probably I probably would have just assumed the fishing was easy because I rolled, I ran, I ran one eighth ounce ball head jigs with paddle tails. Like that was it. <laughs> that and like what? Like uh, inline spinners. Like that was it. Yep. <laughs> well, you were, you were fishing in the river. Like well, I lived in the river. You were, just, you were just waiting. For... I was nipple deep in like a dress shirt, like after work, like every day. <laughs> yeah, for like two years straight, you started growing yeah. algae on your skin and yeah, stuff. Dude. It was, it was, you were real gross at that time. Right? <laughs> and, and the real, the really good thing is they last a lot. You know, mm -hmm. we still have one that's been like I think it's up to like 140 catches. Oh jeez. Um, so you're not going to lose. You know, you're not going to have your tails nipped off all the time. All right, so take my money. <laughs> well, and so but, it's fine. Important. Just it's take important. it, Scott. It's really important that you say that though, because, um, you know, we talked about a little bit with Z-Man and you know some of those other like kind of brands where you're like, you know, I buy one, I buy one of these things and I'm stuck with it. Like not in a bad way, but like I'm gonna, I'm gonna be able to run this bag to death. I haven't gone back to the store and had to buy another one. Yeah. But that's the difference between buying a, um, you know, a, a four or five dollar, uh, you know, ten pack right mm -hmm. of, of kind of your standard run-of-the-mill plastics where anyone's going out making them and they're mass produced and by mass produced i mean like everyone's making them the same way so when you are brand x you just call up one of the 35 manufacturers that are out there and they're that you can that 35 is probably i'm talking about like manufacturing locations right, right, so right. there's all these locations out there like the actual buildings where they make these but you know x number of manufacturers that are making these baits and you can go call them and just be like look i need a minnow What's your standard minnow? Oh, can I get it in this shade of blue? Fantastic. Like, make me uh, 13,000 of those. They're going to be able to use the same exact machinery as they make with all the other plastics, but your stuff is totally different. And and because of that, you don't take advantage of those economies of scale. So you end up paying more per bag, right? And you're getting a significantly higher quality grade of plastic right that's doing a lot of things that these other plastics aren't doing, which again, is going to drive your price up. Like, let's be real. And then on top of that, if they're made in Japan, they have to get over here. That's a that's a four week boat trip. That's fast. That's a six mm -hmm. to eight week boat trip for most people. I know. I used to do it yeah. all the time, it, trying to get it, stuff over here. If if you know if everybody knew all the things we had to do, you would be surprised that we can offer them at this price. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I used, so I used to work for I used to work for Target, right? And Target, I I literally imported things like constantly, and I'm here to tell you. The amount of work that I just did to get a Christmas tree from Yanchian out to San Francisco, it is mind numbing. I mean, it's silly. And you think about trying to now sell something that, you know, is in the realm of like sub $10 or sub $15. Good luck, man. The gas cost just to get the boat over here would, would make you blush. Yes. It, it, yeah, I mean, it's definitely getting more difficult. Um, so, but Nico's, you know, made a huge amount of effort to, keep prices down and uh you know they, they went nine years without a price increase in, until last year and uh what yeah 
Yeah. <laughs> Holy smokes. Yeah. And, uh, As a buyer, if someone yeah. came to me and said they went three years without a price increase, I'd be like, well, next year we're getting a price increase. Yeah, it's yeah. Gonna, we're getting it. <laughs> um, no, I, I mean, they, 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 they work hard. At, we, we all work hard at what we, we, we do. We all have a, a, a dream and a vision, that, and we, we believe that what we're doing is, is good and will be successful in the long term. And, no, I'm li- I'm literally about to go um, make you pack me a box of these for sure. Um, thank you, Scott's the guy. You <laughs> well, when I order it, he's stuff. gonna have to pack it. He's doing yeah. everything else. Um, can we talk about the scents? So I am I am skeptical when it comes to scents, and like I've seen all of the uh, like media that's kind of out there that you see on like Max Scent and you know anybody else that's got a scent that's out there, and they'll tell you that you know whether it's berkeley or whoever right they're they're out here to tell you that like the scent is the reason that you caught that fish and 50 percent of it or whatever like what what are your thoughts on scent in general i know you guys have scented plastics i'm yep. not saying they don't work i'm just saying that i'm skeptical uh uh what what's kind of the what's the deal with scents well, like, do they go the away because that's the other thing i look at the plastic like no yeah well well scent is just one factor uh in the in the total package that you're presenting to the fish um if if you scent is more important in poorly designed baits, because you want that as a factor, where you're like, well, I don't have some of this other stuff. That's right. This bait sucks. Use, I'm, make a, it smell I'm gonna use this. Real juicy. That's like a yeah. that's like it's a not nice. too fast car, but I got nitrous, and I'm gonna hit that button. This is not I'm not gonna lose. <laughs> yeah. So this is my Honda yeah. CRV, but I got nitrous. It's gonna yeah. be no. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a ton of things that, you know, the fish is inputting, and, and this is all done automatically. You know, it's really embedded in their DNA. You know, you've got action profile, size, um, you know, sense. You've got various appendages. You've got proportions. You, you've got, you know, all kinds of things that they just instinctively react to. And, and, and the more you, of course, the more you hit, the easier it is it's going to be a catch fish. Yeah. So, um, so what I've noticed, in, and I would ask you guys your opinion as well i mean uh, i mean companies that promote the scent the most usually have some very simple designs that are not all that great um that, that's my personal opinion so so when Pretty i worked, fair. So, fair opinion so when i worked with nico um i got because i i, I began working with them before they even released their first product mm-hmm. so i was getting baits that were completely clear no color and no scent because we're, you know, they're they're testing molds and everything, and running plastic yeah. through it, and trying to get make sure that they got everything right before they release it to the market. Mm-hmm. And so I would get those, and I would fish those, and I would catch fish just as well as I would on any other bait, with no color and no scent. <laughs> and that's the reason is is because when you have a very well designed bait, you don't have to get to the scent part of the equation. Yeah, um, I, I see what you're saying. But we have it scented. Um, I, there's been many occasions where I'm fishing a bait and I still have baits that are like five, six, seven years old. And so, you know, if, if, if I can find them when I'm a little disorganized, sometimes if I find them, a lot of times I'll make an effort to use them. And, um, and you know, there are times where I think, well, maybe I'm not catching, maybe it, maybe, you know, something's borderline. You think, well, maybe the scent would help. And, uh, so if I'll change out to a new one that has a stronger scent profile, um, you know, a lot of times I will catch a fish, um, but I but I regard scent as as just part of the equation. And, just like anything else, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, that's right. And so, and, and yeah, it, it's just part of the equation, and it it helps. It's not going to hurt you. It's definitely going to help you. It's a plus. It's a plus that so we put it in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, our scents are all oh. Our scents are all natural. They're all naturally scented. They're, they're not, we're not getting a concoction of patented amino acid solutions. Um, that, <laughs> that does not you sound attack your paid for. Um, not, not to mention any names and injecting it that way. I mean, we're, we're actually using, like our crabs are sitting with real crab. Um, our shrimp are sitting with real shrimp. Nice. And then, uh, you know. Why is that so novel? I don't know. Like, what, that? what a crazy concept. How long? Hey, hey, hang on. Hang on. So you're telling me you made an artificial crab and you made it smell like crab? Yeah, it's got real crab it, on it, yes. When it could smell like cough syrup? 
and or Doritos? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but why? <laughs> so, I mean, for but we also use a variety. I mean, we have, uh, you know, we, you know, a lot of our baits are like squid, um, shrimp, we have garlic, and we have some other things that we play around with, uh, depending on the bait and depending on what we want to do. Um, so, and then some baits are a mixture. Some baits have a little variety, and, and uh, but, um, you know, there's there's one thing is, uh, our scent's important, but I would advise everybody not to put like a ton of stress on the scent. Um, okay. Because... So I, I've seen this come up in chat a whole bunch tonight already. So where where do we normally like find Nico baits? Because we talked to you about this before the show a little bit. Uh, what, what's like the best place for someone to go buy it? Because I don't see you on the store shelves. So. That's right. Where do we well, go? Well, I guess the easiest and best place is online. And if you go to the Nico website, um, it would be nico-fishing.com. <laughs> and uh, click on the online store uh, button. And that's going to take you to a uh, Shopify page. Um, we just we just had to set that up. And uh, so the, online's the best. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, we would love to be in your local tackle shop. We really want to support mom and pops as much as we can. Um, so, you know, any any customer who thinks that their local tackle shop should carry our baits, you know, talk to them or, and let, you know, send me a message, just contact me and send me a message and say, hey, hey, talk to so-and-so at such and such bait and tackle. Um, so we would love to do that. We're, we're probably not going to be in Walmart. We're probably not going to be in any of the big giant you know, Wall Street owned companies. Um, you know, we're, we're a small company. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're this premium product and uh, we're not, it's very difficult to just be, you know, to be on there with all the Chinese and other stuff. Um, it's so, so we wanted to be in the mom and pops and, and we, you know, and online, you know, right now. So you want to so be with like the dudes who actually fish by their stuff. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll send you some names. Also, there's a, there's a tackle shop right here that that would gladly carry some nico stuff just saying <laughs> but uh no that's good because a, a lot of people were tossing around like where the heck do i find these things and amazon's the one that always comes up and you mentioned before the show like you guys were crushing amazon oh, yeah. sales with the helgramite right oh yeah the, the helgramite um on the fishing soft baits there's about 32 33,000 items on there and uh our natural Helgramite was often in the top 10, just all by itself, just one color and uh, last year. And, and there's a couple of reasons why we're, we don't, we have a, we're still on Amazon by the way. Um, but uh, the way we're on there is a little different. Um, so there actually, we our, our Helgramite was targeted by organized crime. And uh, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> what? Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, come again. <laughs> no, we, we didn't talk about this before the show. <laughs> no, I'm now I'm learning this just now. So hang on before before your story, real quick. Thank you to Greg Whitaker for your super chat, my friend. Thank you for the five bucks. Uh, he does say so. If I soak some Nico tadpoles in barbecue sauce, I won't get sick. <laughs> no, you will. Don't eat them. <laughs> You'll get but less sick. It, if you happen to eat them, they would probably pass through because they wouldn't harden in your system. So, I mean, there's the, the benefits, but you all right. You can still chase prey, Greg. Yeah, just, uh, <laughs> yeah, back to the true crime episode of yeah. the podcast. So, <laughs> um, after we became so popular on uh, last year on Amazon, um, there's a, you know, around the Amazon warehouses, there's a lot of theft rings. And so they started uh, stealing my algorithms. And uh, it was a mystery for a while, and then suddenly, uh, in in one in one day, I found 21 vendors on eBay scattered all across the country selling my Helgramites. Oh my! They were like, they you guys are only supposed before. to do this with Playstations. Like, why are you? Yeah, that's the PS5, bro. The Helgramites um, versus the PS5. <laughs> so you know, I, I battled I battled Amazon for over a year on this, and uh, they. Uh, to be quite honest, they just don't seem to care. And, uh, wow. and so, uh, hold on, no. <clears throat> let me make a case for Amazon. <laughs> let me make a case for Amazon. <clears throat> to the guy who just got slammed by them, go ahead, Paul. No, I'm, I'm excited to hear what you say. Let me just make a point here. <clears throat> the guy who owns Amazon has enough money to buy, like, every single person on the planet a home. 
uh, to buy every single person on the planet, like a the home. people. No, oh, like he oh yeah, people. sure, go buy the humans. <laughs> I I just he has so much like there's so much money in Amazon, they don't even ask you to ship back a TV when they ship you two, like. Not yeah. that I'm saying that your stuff doesn't matter, but like if I'm Amazon and someone comes to me and it's like, it's you, like owe me, you owe me 15 a... grand in Helgramites, yeah. they're going to be like, where do I send the check? But yeah. they didn't send you a check, did they, Scott? No, they didn't. Oh! See, that's the point, Paul. They straight now up they ignored him. In. Now it's big sunscreen and big Amazon. Big yeah. Amazon. Scott, you should have been like, yo, I'm the guy. <laughs> and <they would> have <laughs> made well, you <laughs> they, they, Amazon doesn't. Yeah, that's that's a different story. But um, <laughs> we're we're still on Amazon. But I'm 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 we're selling out of a non-Amazon warehouse. Uh, yeah, like you can that. still buy them on Amazon. That's perfectly fine. They're easy to find. Um, but um, that way. Yeah. but um, but we're not going to be in the rankings like we used to last year because uh, you know we're you know literally entire shipments of thousands and thousands of packs of Helgramites would disappear. Um, so. Oh. See, I, I, I'm with Fish and FX. Why Helgramites? Like, say I'm in this crime syndicate, right? I'm like, all right, guys, today we're knocking off an Amazon warehouse. Oh, cool. Are we getting electronics? No, we're getting a bunch of like plastic bugs that look like water <laughs> well, centipedes. Well, you guys think about it. Okay, so number one, they were super easy to sell. Yep. That's they, were, they, were not a, they, were, they were easy to sell. They're not available elsewhere. Um, and uh, they're small and compact. And they and they have a relatively high value in that market, and uh, you know also, you know people Amazon, you know the rankings on Amazon are open. Amazon sells that data to people. People collect it, and they run their spreadsheets and they say, well, let's target this product. Can we sell it? And and they can, and they do. It's math. It's just math. Like yep. it doesn't. Just numbers. No, the thing doesn't system. matter. The thing doesn't no. matter at all. What it is, not important. <laughs> I, yep. I hear you. I hear you. I'm just like, you guys remember like the first Fast and Furious where they just stole like DVD players? VCRs, bro. <laughs> VCRs. DVDs on my. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's been a, uh, it's a big struggle. So. Oh, Paul Walker, that's absurd, trying to move some, man. Trying to move some Helgramites. That would have been a much better movie. All right, <laughs> Dave. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. No, he did die. I like, know. All of the Fast and Furious movies after, like, I think six are basically, like, in memory of. And, and like, they just always reference him in a random video. They just, like, pour one out. No, he's in, like, the trailer for F-27 or whatever one they're on. And Vin Diesel's, like, watching an iPad. And, like, Paul Walker's on there, like, tossing a baby. You gotta remember my boy. He's gonna be in the in this thing forever. Forever. Uh. All right, so the one thing, one question I have, uh, they are floating now. Is that is that sort of like a happy accident, or is that something that was like a part of like an intent, like that you guys had? Um, well, they're they're just they just float inherently. Yeah. So you weren't like we need to make a plan. Let's make them float. float. It was like we made these, and they, they also float. Yeah, they're gonna float. Um, we actually experimented with some very unique stuff. Uh, uh, really cool things, but to actually make some of them sink, and uh, but uh, we had to, um, we've abandoned. Well, I don't say abandoned. We've put that off for, you know, for some time. You know, and, and again, that was a very new and unique technology as well. Mm -hmm. Would have been really cool, but we'll I wait. Think it's it's so much easier to get something to sink than it is to get something to float. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like Jack yeah. Jagman 316. I'm sorry, I gotta call it out. It says we all float down here <laughs> because I've seen it. <laughs> I'm sorry, that got me. <laughs> no. Proceed. Yeah. yeah, you're right. It's easy to make things sink. You know, it's very difficult to make them float. No, I told. I t it's like if you were gonna choose one, I know I, that's the one I would choose every single time. That's why I call it like a happy accident because it's like, oh. And they float. Fantastic. A buoyant, yeah. a buoyant bait is. Yeah, I mean they they. they they stand up. Um, yes. You can use them top water. I mean, that crab I use top water. The crawls, the helgramites, bass worms, everything. I, I want to see. I now I must. I must get a crab top water bluff. Like that is a that is sort of a must have right now. <laughs> All right. It's, so yeah. we sorry we had this question in in chat. Phil Decker wants to know how to become a rep. So I'm wondering, do you like you guys are a growing company? Yeah. Like, are are you taking on 
like reps, pro staff? Like, are you guys growing social media marketing? Like, what are you guys doing to? Yeah, uh, we, we are. To we're extent? always. Um, we're we're not. Uh, you know, it's it's not like we have this like we're gonna have a thirty guys or fifty guys by next month. So we just sure. hey, we 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 go at our own pace. We do our own thing, and mm-hmm. um, I will sacrifice quantity for quality every single time so if somebody quality comes along we will take them on and uh you know it's a it's no nonsense no drama um everybody gets along if, if you don't i we're just i'm just too busy to deal with anything like that <laughs> so I, I mean you've gotten seven calls and 98 emails while we've been on this call so <laughs> uh, yeah so i'm just hearing your email just go boom boom, boom. so so yeah, if, if someone wants to be a rep or like even people on like social media or pro staff, we generally do not take anybody who's not already fishing the baits. Mm, if they fair. don't, if they already don't like the baits, we're not putting them on. <laughs> that's like the best. That <laughs> that's music to my ears, man. I we, love know, it. we talked to we talked to a lot of people, and Jeff and I have had this experience, right? Where oh, we say this um, to everybody that talks to us, really. No, because we'll have people, you know, approach us, and and we have a like one of the our, the people that we like working with the most, and we basically told them like, I don't I don't know, I don't know if I want to like I've not I've not used it. I can't. That's a oh, that's, yeah, an, this... I don't, that's an I don't know for me. Yeah, this so, happened with uh, with Akuma. So we just yeah. started working with Akuma, but when they first reached out to us, I was like, bro, I've never used an Akuma anything. <laughs> so they yeah. sent me something, and I was like, cool, I'll use this. Used it for a while. I was like, oh, I like this. Yeah. But no, I, I totally hear where you're coming yeah, from. That so, makes a lot of sense. You know, we've, we've grown organically. You know, pretty much everything on YouTube is organic. Um, everything we've done is pretty much organic. And mm-hmm. I get love letters all the time. I, this is really strange in a fishing scenario. I mean, I, I, I get letters probably once a month from somebody saying this Helgramite has just changed their lives. You know, they, they just love fishing. They wow. Do, and, and, and so if you want to be on the pro staff, the least you could do is like the baits and fish them. <laughs> you know you could do? Fair. Fair. So Boy, we're, not so looking for, we're not looking for someone to just sell them just to sell them. You right. Know, if, you know, we're we're sincere in what we do. We would expect everybody else to be that way too. Like, do we have to send you a love letter first? I'm just wondering. Well, yeah. Like, oh, it's like your true. resume is a love letter. It's like a cover letter. It's just a love letter to <laughs> Scott. It, it also speaks to the brand, right? So you guys talk That's a lot. About, you guys talk about creating a, a quality product, um, and quality starts from the ground up, right? And you just talked about um, a quality relationship, right? Having a relationship relationship with somebody that you expect to sell the product. Well, I'm not asking you to sell the product at this point. I'm not just asking you to sell the product. I'm asking you, did you reach out to me because you like it, or did you reach out to me because you want some plastics? Right? There's a huge difference. There's a huge difference. Yeah. And um, you, again, it just speaks to the quality of what that relationship's going to be and how they're going to interact with the people who are reaching out to them. Because if 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 I like something, you'll know about it. Ask me about a curly tail grub. I'll try and sell you one all gosh darn day long. I don't care if anyone thinks they're cool or not. I think they work, and I'll tell people that I like them. And and that's what's gonna. It, that's that's a big difference maker. So it's it just speaks to the quality. I think that's really cool. Yeah, you know, I I would say that all or pretty much pretty much everyone on our pro staff was fishing Nico products before they came on board. That's awesome. That's phenomenal. So yeah. uh, go ahead, Jeff. No, we're we're gonna pick some up. Because now I really want to do that video versus Z-Man and see if, if what I think is going to happen is going to happen. And I might have to change. But we're never changing the name of the Shark Deucers. So uh, my question is, do you have a color that has chartreuse in it, at least? <laughs> um, I don't think so. I looked at the catalog. I don't even <laughs> like chartreuse. It's like my least favorite color. <laughs> it's... My I, I, I caught one saltwater bait that has structures. Oh man! Um, I'm gonna have to get a. I like your bass on them, but still, you know, it, it's it's a different. It's like a like squid strips type of bait. Yep. Uh, well, you got some salmon eggs. That, well, I call them salmon eggs. But you got some egg looking uh, like row type pattern that you got. Oh yeah, too. those are those are. Those have a place in bass fishing as well. People don't. I know they do. Yeah. You know, don't realize. No, we we gotta try some of this stuff. No, I 100%. I, so I, th- this actually gets into 
I know we're hitting the one hour mark, and I know you got about 22 billion things you got to do. But I want to talk about <laughs> some of the. Emails. I want to talk about some of the patterns that you guys have out there because you talked a little bit about the uniqueness, right? And we talked about I don't know, I think two or three of them already, but you've got the Helgramite, right? Yep. Which is like your sort of claim to fame. Yep. Well, there it is. Look I at those appendages. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So, Bro, I'm looking at all these micro baits. Dude, I, I yeah. want I had a, that was a whole segment that I want to talk about because yep. I feel like I want to ice fish the tar out of those. Like I want to get those under hard water so bad. Oh I'm, yeah. Well, that no, that's a great idea. Yeah. We will definitely take that. That little scud? Fish. That little scud, yeah. that little shrimpy scud guy? Yeah, that is gonna that's yeah. gonna do it. How about the, the six inch super crab? I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you've got the uh, what you've got the winnow. But, uh, I'll do a quick. Uh, let me break this down here. Oh <laughs> my gosh, he's got them all laid out. Yo. <laughs> this is the most prepared guest we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let's see here. Yeah, we got the Helgramites. We already talked about those yep, a little bit. Gotta get those. And they're our number one seller, and basically, if you just want to catch a fish, and if you have to survive on fish that you catch to eat, then the Helgramites a good bait. Oh. Um, you guys, uh, the crawls are really, really nice. Yep, love a lot those. of work went into the crawls, very unique bait. Um, just a lot of unique angles, and people don't know this even the little bumps on the crawls are unique to each crawl. Wow, so they're not uniform. So, <laughs> so we can autograph them, is what you're saying. So, um, <laughs> That's so cool. Well, I mean, they're yeah. unique to the degree that we have cavities in the mold, but yeah. each cavity in the mold is unique on oh, the crawl. No. So the bumps are, are actually um, uh, placed differently. And so a lot of times when you miss a fish and, you you know, you can come back with a different bait or or in this case, if you happen to go back with a different craw, chances are you're going to have a slightly different craw going back as well. So it's just another little tiny thing to help you increase your chances of catching fish. Um, you know, the crawls are really nice. I mean, they stand up, they float. Uh, yep. I don't know if you can see this. See those? those oh <laughs> Dude, pulling on pulling on the claws is such a yeah. good play because that's where the thinnest part of the plastic is. I yeah, gotta be that I appreciate. So <laughs> yeah, these these claws will not away all my off very easily. Um, they uh, they're minimum minimum two times stronger than anything, and typically three, four, five times stronger than other claws on the market. That little that little craw arm is stronger than like the chain winch in my truck. That's silly. Well, can you look at the here's the antenna. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god. The thing is I'm gonna put my arm to shame. Yeah, so you know, even the antenna samples. you know oh my gosh. now if you kinda of notice this, I mean the antenna come out at an angle. Yeah. Have yeah. you noticed everyone else is a straight? You know, all that is just a that's just Wall Street making design decisions instead of <laughs> and, and, um instead Dagger. of yeah, and, and so you know, we we have the proper angles on the on the antenna. We have the proper length on the antenna. I mean, the antennas stick way out there, um, but we can do that because of our material. And um, you know, we have uh, a slit in the back so you can text pose the uh, the hooks. You, you, I think you guys have used them, and even uh, yep. put a nice little slit in the uh, bottom here, yeah. so that you, when you have your offset hooks, the, the right angle can come through there. And it, and it helps you keep everything centered properly and easy to rig. Um, just really, really easy to use baits. Um, so those are the craws. And the, the craws, with the craws, we introduced something very unique that we were the first in the world. Actually, Nico has a, a several first in the world uh, things. And like, for example, this bait has glow flake in it. I wanted to ask you about that. I was that's getting... the one I used. That's the uh, color I used on the river. So tell me about the glow flake, because I think you have that in the window now too, right? Yeah, uh, yes, we do. So I'll just kind of put it back up here. The um, the glow flake is again, it's the it's the first time in the world. We're the very first company to to have this. Um, the flake, the it'll charge invisible light, but it really charges very well with UV light. So if you're out in the fishing, I mean, you got plenty of UV light naturally to, to charge yep. it. Well. But when you when you when they're in the water when they're glowing it actually kind of looks like looking up at the sky at night, in a in a clear night in the countryside. Wow. And so and we named the baits kind of along that way. So this color is called galaxy. This black and blue. I love it's it. Called galaxy. It looks like the galaxy. When you get <laughs> um, and you know we have uh, in our winnow, 
this one we call the Milky Way. This one also has a lot of blowplate in it. That's the one that I saw. There was like a greenish one and a bluish one, and I was like, dude, yeah. that is ridiculous. There also it is. Blue flake. Yeah, the that second one right it does, that also has glow flake in it. So um, another thing that other companies can't really do is make clear baits. And so Nico can make clear baits. So we can use that glow that partially refracts within the material. And that provides a different look. Um, and actually provides a very natural look. If you actually research like a lot of deep sea creatures and you know mm -hmm. microorganisms and, and such, you, you'll yeah. you actually experience some of this. And so it appeals to the fish at a at a deeper, more DNA based level, and that makes that helps make the baits more effective. I mean, even a minnow, like half the time, if you see an adolescent minnow, they're not silver; they're clear. That's like right. They're clear. Yeah, that, yeah that's freaking awesome. And yeah, and so we, I, I, I personally love clear baits. Um, sadly, uh, people don't buy them, so you know we're not really making them. And because uh, they're like, bro, colored. It has to be colored. It's not. It's not. Well, it's not <laughs> sexy. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, that's exactly it. Everybody who's with me on Nico, when we you know we talk to the pro staff, we'll talk about clear. Everyone knows that I love clear baits, um, but you know we just we just can't sell them. We'll make them, but people won't buy them. And uh, you know that's I guess one thing. A lot of people just need to open their minds a little bit more. Yeah. Well, this is and this is something that we deal with quite a bit, right? So in working with monster baits, we see like a ton of different baits, right? And there, you you can pretty much tell. When someone is selling to the uh, the fishermen, not necessarily the fish, and it's not that it won't work. And actually, from a sales perspective, what's going to end up in the market? We know what's going to work, right? It's just right. like when it's just like when you want to sell something to kids. You don't necessarily sell just to the kid. You 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 sell it to the mom. <laughs> right. Mom's the one walking the aisle and is going to make the decision. Whoever's got the pocketbook is making the call. Six yeah. year old's not going to put down a credit card. So yeah, you sell to mom. 100%. Yeah, and, and that's what we struggle with at the beginning. We had baits that caught fish, but people wouldn't buy them at the beginning. And that's where we we took a step back, thought about it, and we, we wanted we wanted both. So we that was the way we started with the Helgramite. Um, we got the Craw. Um, we got the Winnow. And just this year, well, this year, the Winnow's only released in January. And another bait that's doing really, really well right now. Yes. With leech. This leech is really... Yeah, I mean, this is hitting all of my sweet spots. I love this one so yeah. much. So, so the leech was very similar to the algamites. I looked around at leeches in general, yeah, and I was like, not all that impressed. Even though it's a very simple bait, it's a simple profile. Um, I looked at them and I said, "There's a, there's, we can do much, much better." And uh, so we did. And uh, the, uh, the this leech is uh, designed in a way that has a really amazing natural action. And uh, and it, it's it's yeah I, you know, I fished it for the last three weeks uh, recently when I can get out and it, <laughs> it's performed every bit as good as the algorithm. Did you get uh, to fish? Uh, three times, three days this year. That's oh, it. Oh man, dude, we gotta get you like ten more employees so you can fish five days. I, yes. I know. I Not even it. fair. So the the Helgramite here. I'm sorry. The the leeches here are brand new. Um, and some of those have glow flake. Here's one that's it's a fusion color. Um, it's uh, it's got yeah. it's like a green. It's got it's got gold, red, black, and a little bit of glow red flake in it. And I'm, um, di I'm digging that color. So this, that, this that is, is another, me. Again, this is a it's a not only it's a fusion of colors, but also you know yeah, it harks back to some of the the things that we do with the, you know, the galaxy and Milky Way as well. Yeah. And, um, so that, that's a nice color. And the other thing we have uh, is the brand new is these little, these little super neds. Thank you. And <laughs> I'll take all of those. <laughs> the, these were inspired by our bass worms right here. Oh, nice. So these bass worms are really, really amazing. And I'll talk about them later, but a, a lot of our pro staff and customers were buying the worms and cutting them in half and using them as net, on nets. That's what I used to do. Classic, classic. <laughs> and uh, this this head design is is a really really nicely designed. You know, mm -hmm. it, it hits a it hits a it, it really hits some sweet spots on proportions, vibrations, and and, and the way mm -hmm. the ribs are and everything. And uh, so basically, I took this and I changed the proportions slightly. Um, to make it even more effective, 
and we came up with these little super neds and so these are again you know super strong super durable they're all scented and uh they're not going to break easily i mean you'll lose them before you these things wear out um the other really cool thing we do is we leave this square end as concave so it snugs up on round uh, you know, nice. the head of the jig head. You so you'll get a much that. more snug fit uh, there as well and uh and it's just a it's you know hey it, it's another ned worm right i mean there's plenty of them out there but i don't think you're going to find anything with that profile um and and this profile has really really proven very well i've got a lot of people now um this was just released in february but i've you know i've got a lot of people reordering them already so um nice. I'm very happy when they when they fish them head to head versus what they would normally fish they come back and buy nico and uh you know it's because we put a lot into there. there's a little there's a little bit of magic you know you gotta you gotta hit those fish in all yeah. the different ways you can to trigger them to bite and although it looks very simple i mean there's a lot of time put in um getting things just right um and we have these little tadpoles those are sweet <laughs> yeah these are, that. you know I, again you know the tail they're not going to be bitten off very easily right wow. and so the tadpoles are really nice. Most people drop shot them. Um, yeah, I actually yeah. technically bring them with the hook right to the tail. Um, oh. And uh, so, and then we have the bass worms. And the bass worms are, these are the most customizable bass worms on, in the world. Um, so they're actually hollow. And <laughs> so let me get them in the light here. Here we go. So we actually have a hole. Can you guys see that? See my finger through the hole? What? Yeah. So we actually have a hole in it, and that hole extends all the way to the head. So the baits are actually hollow for maybe about 60% of the length. <laughs> and so this allows you to do a ton of things. Um, you can, first, you can use them top water. Um, in fact, when you use them top water, you, if you play around with it, and I have, you can actually adjust their buoyancy. You can make them dive slightly. You can pop them. You can, uh, if you get things just right, you can even get a, a, a different, unique popping sound as the air goes through the through the worm and out that hole. Um, really, really, you know, very versatile. Um, you can put rattles inside there. You can inject scent. You can put whatever you want. Um, I've even put other baits through this hole. <laughs> um, you know, just playing around, you know, and, um, um, you know, and I tell people, you know, you could, if you can get a dead possum up in there, you could probably do that too. Um, <laughs> what uh, the actual heck. <laughs> and so, you know, the other thing is, you know, if again, depends on how you fish them and they float. So if, if you don't want them going through the water, you know, at, at a particular angle, you can put weights in there and you can adjust the angle that it goes through the water. Um, you can do anything with these. Um, they're really, really amazing. And some people believe, and I, I don't really know, but because they're hollow, um, some people believe that the bass detect that and believe that it's an air bladder of another living organism. Oh, gotcha. fish, and they believe that that increases the effectiveness. Um, and so, so just, just by the way, these worms, when I first started out, I gave some to a guy here in Virginia, high schooler. He was probably in ninth or 10th grade. He became the bass fishing champion of Virginia on these worms. <laughs> he, he caught the largest bass in Virginia on this worm. Wow. He placed that's, second that's in national resume. fishing this worm. And he was, uh, he's graduated from college now, but he was highly ranked in college and he was fishing these worms. Um, so these, you know, the worms are very effective. You know, it really depends on what you want to do with them and how you, how you want to work with them. And My mind so, is melting. Yeah, literally, we're dying over here. While while you continue, or, or right before you continue, rather, uh, hey, chat, we got a giveaway to run for y'all. And uh, as always, it's sponsored by Monster Bass. If you guys want to go check them out, go to monsterbass.com. You can order your first bag for 15 bucks off if you use code SAVE15, S-A-V-E-1-5. So go check that out. And uh, yeah, you guys already know what to do. Start chitty chatting. We're going to let it roll for a little while while Scott talks, and then we're going to pick a random winner from chat. Y'all got a chance to win $25 gift card. Good for anything on MonsterBass.com except for the subscription. So let's roll. Sorry, Scott. Go back. Oh, no problem. <laughs> 
I want to see this. Do you have the octopus on the table? Or the oh, squid? yeah, I've got uh, two of them. Um, oh, so goodness. let's bring that down. So I, I have, uh, there's Dude, a four I'm and a half feet and the three and a half. Um, maybe it just looks like a super tube. I want to throw it as a, like, so That's going to have so many smallmouth at the dam. It's absurd. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, well, when I first started with Nico, I had shrimp, tadpoles, and octopus. And that was it. And I caught more smallmouth than I did in my entire life growing up fishing smallmouth. <laughs> and, that's and, why the, I thought, the... and that's why I thought these things are great. But right? the Americans were but, like, nah, dude. <laughs> no, but they said, no, no, no. No, bass won't eat octopus. Bunch what of you dummies. You know, and, and um, but yeah, it, it's, uh, it, and just to give you an idea of these, again, the material is very resilient. The heads are hollow, so you can actually turn them inside out. So you can actually put weights, rattles in there, and um, you can put, um, we talked to those little scent balls we have uh, in Japan. They actually, we have these little super scent balls that they will actually put those in there to add a, a different scent profile and, uh, oh. and to give it a little bit more, you know, bulk to oh, it. I bet those crush in the ocean. Yeah. They're, well, that's the most successful line of Nico. So they have, uh, I think, five or six different sizes. Mm. Uh, and, wow. Uh, and and they're sold to commercial fishermen as well. Oh, and, really? Yes. Yeah. Commercial nice. guys are running these. Commercial guys. So commercial guys wow. will buy our octopus, our squid strips, and they would buy these these here as well. So just so everybody knows, if you're a commercial fisherman, you're only concerned with one thing, and and All nothing the else. Fish caught. And that's quantity. Yep. You just want to catch, 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 catch. You don't care about anything. You don't care. Like, Repeating and if you're going course. out and buying a a more expensive version of something, it's because it catches. I'm just saying, if commercial guys are running it, I'm officially sold. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And uh, so just a little quick uh, story. I mean, for commercial guys, most of it's tuna guys. Um, oh. And uh, a lot of long line fishermen. So what they'll do is they'll put, they'll still utilize bait or cut bait as the primary source. But what they've done was they, they'll replace every fourth hook every you know for third third fourth fifth hook with a nico product and so that allows them to process the catch on the boat with without re-rigging so yeah. they, they don't have to re-rig they don't have to put more bait back on and they can do so without any you know really any reduction of catch so the nico products performs well enough that they that they'll just keep using those so you're like cut bait, cut bait, take a break for the Nico, cut bait, well, cut, cut bait, bait, cut break, and, and that Nico bait's still working. Yeah. And it's cut bait, cut bait, That's take a breath, bonkers. cut bait, cut bait, and uh, yeah, I mean, and in fact, you talk about volume. So we, you know, no one from Nico can even get on a boat um, because the the boats are so. I mean, it is like how many seconds, how many dollars, you know, every second is how many dollars. Yes. Um, how many fish? How many? You know, how much? line did we cover it's uh it's they said we don't want anybody else on the boat there's no room yeah you're a, you're a waste you're a problem <laughs> you're gonna get in the way <laughs> yeah that's unreal i um, love that can you um we talked a little bit about some of your uh some of your eggs I, i'll be honest when i was going through the site i'm a big bass guy but i like to fish for everything i literally all i saw was unlimited uh trout stuff i was like I could literally go get trout with almost anything in here that's less than four inches, like no yep. problem. Yep. It was silly. That little, I don't, I don't even know what it was. I don't. It looks like it's just that like little pink, uh, like two or three inch strip that you have uh, on the table. Oh, this, okay. Um, would it be this one here? Yes. What is that? Well, that we call that a sandworm, um, and they're made out of a special material, so it's even softer than the regular material, Nico stuff. It, and wow <laughs> i could catch you i could catch you unlimited trout i would unlimited. not limited on one of those i promise you i could feed my family for a month yeah yeah you probably could wow. if if any of the viewers look on the site they'll they'll see some of the baits have the word dappy in front of them so dappy means molt in japanese like a, a snake or an insect molting gotcha. and so these baits are actually engineered to resemble the same softness as a newly molted insect <laughs> so they are really really soft i, yeah, I mean, really soft. I mean you would be cool. you're going to be really surprised at how soft they are 
And uh, so it's very effective for some of the smaller baits, like our wax worm. We have that in this dappy material. It, it feels like a real wax worm. That but was the that. But instead of going through, <laughs> but instead of going through twenty dollars worth of wax worms in a day, you know, you can have one Nico on there all day long. Who who's done that? <laughs> oh, bro, there's a there's a tackle shop about three miles from here that's got like forty bucks of mine. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So <laughs> it's gonna be but more. The wax worms, you know, the, but they're great for trout and panfish. I mean, uh, if. if if you're into the small baits, I mean, we make a really, really awesome small baits. You know that little wax room we have? You yeah. actually have to get a microscope, not a micro, a little magnifying glass out, and you can see tiny mouth parts, and you can see tiny little pro legs that are actually on a real wax worm. Um, heck, man? <laughs> and, and, you know, you can, if you can, uh, with our little mayflies, we took uh, like a stealth fighter approach with the angles. Um, and the stoneflies have little, they even have the little gills on their legs, or the little frills. Um, the the stoneflies one, I need yeah. to go get for my buddy who works at the trout shop uh, down the road. Yeah. Because I'll be honest, once you get the right hook for that, yep. you could drift that under a bobber your entire life. <laughs> well, well the, the stonefly is actually used by some panfish guys. Yeah, yeah. 100%. It's a cheat yeah. code. That's not even fair. Yep. Um, so, I mean, if you talk about small baits, my personal favorite is the is the caddisflies. And, mm, yeah. um, you know, I tell people, you know, the caddisflies are not my best seller. And I tell, you know, I could be at fishing shows. I can talk to customers and say, buy the caddisfly. And they'll go, okay. And then they'll grab a pack of stoneflies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, the, the little print on the leg, the detail, <laughs> just, 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 they just can't stay away. But, um, you know, the, the caddis flies, if I don't catch a fish on the caddis fly, I, 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 you just go somewhere, you know, just give up. There's, There's no, no fish here. This is yeah, a they're, they're fish not If they don't hit a caddis fly, they're not, they're, you're just, you're wasting your time. <laughs> you wasted a day off work. I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, and we, the small baits are really nice. I, I really like them, um, you know, but, you know, again, you got to survive, and uh, our small baits are really nice. But um, you know, it, it's hard to keep coming out with a lot of small baits. Um, so you know, I hope to yeah. come out with a uh, small Elgermite at some point in the future. Oh, nice! That would be um, rad. And, and we have some other thoughts on some small baits, um, but <laughs> um, you know, our, our priority right now is you know, we have the best value that we can bring anybody who's fishing right now you know the greatest value we can bring is be like these winnows and these crawls however might yeah weren't bass worms in the nets i mean that's that's where most people are going to experience have that nico experience um and if they fish for small stuff they're going to be really really happy with what we've got but, oh man i oh, love yeah. it that hell of an assortment and i i was like a kid in the candy store running through the small baits too i mean I, I was seeing the eggs and some of the other patterns and i just thought it was uh you were the, i mean unbelievable so very very yeah. cool um, so go ahead man. no i was i was just gonna say you know i can i put up a code actually on the website for your viewers so oh really yeah i actually i actually did it while we were, <laughs> we were talking here <laughs> oh okay just, put up, just type in burley and, just type um, in Burley, and that gives them ten percent, ten percent off 10%? on the site. No way. And so, well, shoot, you know. man, I'm gonna use that. <laughs> I, 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 I gotta tell you, while you were just talking, I filled a cart with like 150 bucks worth of plastic. Well, let me take that code down there just for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it didn't work. Got him. Got him. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. No, just I just type in Burley. It'll be good for ten percent, and um. You know, it, it's, we have, I think people will really enjoy it. And if you have yeah. any questions, you know, let me know. And, you know, if, maybe I don't know if any viewers have any more questions now or you guys are running the show here. So, yeah, absolutely. So, hey, we, we definitely appreciate that. You guys use the code Burley, B U R L Y. I know some of you guys like to add an E in there for some reason and it doesn't exist, <laughs> but B U R L Y. That's your code. Use it. You get 10% off. And uh, yep, Chaz just posted the link. So click that link. Go. To, it's a Shopify site. They got all the baits in there. Somebody buy those squids and octopuses. Like those things are sweet. <laughs> How about that crap? Yep. You guys didn't ever. 
Mm, now I have to have, do I have to get the six inch or the one inch crab? What do you think? Oh, top water the six? Is that Just a like... real question? Shut yeah. up. Yeah, that little one, you know, that's, <laughs> hey, that's, that's like really, really tiny. Um, yeah, I'm gonna pop it on a net rig and catch a whole bunch. You know, it's that's kind of, of crap. <laughs> I mean, as far as bass fishing goes, it, it's kind of gimmicky, but it but it's yeah. effective and it works and it's a lot of fun. So I, I, oh. I use it every oh, year. I'm sorry, do you say it's very effective and a lot of fun? I hate that. You get ten percent off a good time. I hate that for us. <laughs> so, All right. Well, let's run this giveaway, Chaz. And then, yeah, if you guys have any any more questions, actually, there. Uh, hang on, Chaz. Real quick, before you draw the giveaway, we do need to answer this question. I keep passing it by. Uh, Nico Bates, reactive with other plastics? Will they? Oh, yeah, that's important. Um, yes. So. Nico Bates will not cause any damage to anything. However, the plastisol that we talked about earlier in the, in the podcast, mm -hmm. is a very reactive, extremely mm -hmm. reactive chemical. It, it, it will act as a solvent. It, it dissolves some stuff. It destroys stuff. And it will, it will basically dissolve and react with some of the components of Nico's Bates. So Nico's baits will be destroyed by plastisol baits, the typical baits. Okay. And so I, I would encourage listeners to think of use that imagery as to that's kind of in a way that's kind of what plastisol does does to your body too at a at a level microscopic level. Good point. Um, wow. So so Nico, so if you have Nico products, keep them in their packs. That's the best solution. Um, some people will put them in their tackle box, and uh, that sometimes doesn't work out very well. Um, that chemical in the, the plastisol will leach out of your baits. It goes through your skin. It goes everywhere. It's also in the trays of your tackle box. And um, so if you leave them in there, if those are not virgin trays, um, then don't put them in there. Uh, if it's a dedicated virgin tackle box or, or cleaned very, very well, that should be fine. But do not mix them with ordinary plastics. Good point. Good thing to bring up. All right, Chaz. Let's draw our winner here real quick. And you guys, if you have more questions, keep dropping them. There's one question. Oh, go ahead, Chaz. Go ahead, Chaz. Got? <laughs> Soy Sauce 28, who just asked, so they melt, uh, or stated, so they melt. They are melted by plastisol, but also Soy Sauce 28, you win. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so say something to us. Say hi. Say I'm still here because you just commented like five seconds ago <laughs> so. but while we're waiting for soy sauce to get back to us and say yay i won um so the there was a question that came up like 38 times uh will they melt on their own just sitting there no <laughs> existing okay no. so nico <laughs> nico's plastic has a higher melting point than plastisol bait so if you put a regular bait on your dashboard and a nico on your dashboard the plastisol will melt quicker. Um, one, there's a, there's actually a YouTube video, a little short one of uh, melting them in a microwave or an oven, and the other ones are catching on fire while Nico's still there. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, so the video had to end because there was a fire going on. <laughs> but that's so awesome. And the other thing that w that makes them good in cold water as well is that they retain more softness and resiliency in action. So they, they do not harden. They retain a lot more softness at colder temperatures as well. So if you're fishing very cold water or under the ice, um, you know, you can get a lot more action out of these baits than you would other plastics. I love that. I think the bottom line is you're not going to have a problem. And the only problem you're going to have is your other crappy plastics that are ruining the fun for everybody. That's your real problem is all your other Senkos. So yep. Yep. don't worry about the Nikos. Worry about all the other garbage Hellion plastics that you have laying around making no fun for everybody. Great point. Uh, Soy Sauce 28 is here in the house. Congrats. Uh, can you put your email in chat? Look at me. My hands are up here. I'm not going to touch the keyboard. Don't worry. I will not reveal your email to the world. No one will be uh, able to see it when you type it in. Only Chaz will be able to see it. Only Chaz, the great and powerful wizard of Chaz, can see it. You, you didn't post anything that we you have to. You have that. to type it in. You have to click enter. Yep. <laughs> He's been <laughs> chatting the whole time. I think he knows how to chat. Uh, wow. And if it doesn't work for some reason, we'll, we'll hang out here for a little bit. We'll watch the chat window. Uh, and you can always hit us up <clears throat> on Instagram, or you can uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that we take care of you. Reach out on social media. 
Oh, uh, Jeff Lauer did ask this question, Scott, which I think is a good one. Do you ship to Canada? Yes, I do. Um, yeah, I, I will ship anywhere in the world. So I'm, I'm not allowed to advertise and try to get business in other countries because North America is my territory. Okay. Um, but if they come to me, I, I can ship anywhere. In the world. And you mentioned Switzerland earlier um, about not banning plastics. Well, I just shipped to Switzerland about three weeks ago. Um, wow. But uh, I, yes, I do ship to Canada. Um, and I just kind of have to apologize to the Canadians that the U.S. post office is just horrible. Um, mm -hmm. It's expensive. And for some reason, between the U.S. and the U Canadian post office, the handoff usually seems to take a long time. So um, they almost always get there. Um, almost always. Here's one that got returned. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for 40 bucks and four weeks oh. of shipping. Yeah, but yes, I will ship to Canada. That's awesome. It is brutal. I think it's the weird zip code. Everyone in the U.S. sees that weird zip code, and their brains just melt. They're like, "Letters, get out of here." Oh, that'll be five thousand dollars, sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, everything seems to go through New York. Oh, fair. That sounds terrible. Awesome. Well, hey, man. Uh, soy sauce. We haven't seen your your email yet, my friend. But Chaz just posted. Just email us podcast at burlyfishing dot com. Worst case. Yeah, we'll, we'll double check with you and you can also hit me up on IG, worst case scenario, but otherwise keep trying to type it into chat while we're closing out. Uh, but Scott, anywhere uh, that people should be looking for Nico Bates, like wh where should we find you? Where should we be looking for all of your cool stuff? Oh, well, again, the best place is the nico-fishing.com. Click on the online store button. It'll take you to a Shopify site. Um, the you know, once you get there, I, I recommend just bookmarking the Shopify site. <laughs> that's uh, save you a little bit of time mm -hmm. going forward. Um, that's that's the easiest place. It's it's where we have everything offered there. If Nico makes it, I carry it. Um, you know, I take care of all of North America. So we, you know, we have a few obscure products that I might sell five per year. You know, but mm -hmm. I have them, and uh, and they're still good product. <laughs> so that's the easiest place. Um, and again, I also recommend, you know, we'd really like to be in some quality, you know, tackle shops with, you know, with good people with a good selection that provide a good service to people. And that's that's kind of who we'd like to be with. So if you have those the shops in your area and you think they'd be a good match, then, you know, drop us a line. And, uh, you know, we we always try to take care of people who help us. So, you know, if something good happens for us, something good might happen to you. So, um, well, I saw you only had one in Michigan, so I think we need to uh, pinpoint. I already know who off. I'm reaching out to. I'm gonna. Yep. I, I guess I know. I know somebody who just opened up their doors for regular bass guys, and they're and they're ready to. They they need the Nico. I'm gonna talk to them right now. Yeah, we, we got and, some suggestions. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's really it, it's a different level of baits. It's a different level of fishing. So for me, um, this is this. I fished all my life, but Nico really opened my mind and made me understand and learn things that you know, it allowed me to apply knowledge from different fields and to fishing. And, you know, we've been able to incorporate those into the, into the design, but um, it's been a great experience. And I would just recommend to people is give it a try. Um, you know, you, when you have a good bait, you don't have to do everything else that everybody else does. You know? Um, yep. and, good uh, point. <laughs> great <laughs> point. <laughs> Oh yeah, you can buy them in Japan, but you're going to be hard pressed to find, like, for example, the Helgramite. So, sure. Yeah, Japan actually has Helgramites naturally. Yeah. Nobody fishes them. Huh. Uh, I'll probably put one on there, but I didn't. I, I kind of rushed it in there. I don't have one right now. Ah, you had to ask. You had to way, ask. Way to ruin it. Yeah. It <laughs> sounds like you. Sounds like you got a week. You better uh, get it together. I'll I'll, I'll put it up for. Uh, yeah, at least a month. So anybody who comes across here, they can uh, they can use it. There you go. But you, uh, whatever you buy is not going to die for about 10 years. So best <laughs> yeah, of luck seriously. stocking. Nerd. Not much of an investment. <laughs> Let's do this. Hey, well, <laughs> you, you right. know, the typical pattern is I get a first-time order. 
and then uh, probably about a the day or the day after it arrived, I get a, a much bigger order. <laughs> well, that, that's a very common pattern. We we are the opposite of that pattern. You're about to get a huge order. <laughs> the drive the dump truck around the back, my guy. <laughs> we're like, uh, we're just testing this out. I'll take about 48 packs. Let's do this thing. <laughs> <laughs> the only way I like. That. Yeah, here's 2,000. Take my money, sir. All right, Scott. Well, hey, we appreciate you. Thanks so much for the extra time tonight. And uh, thanks for all the info. Oh, my gosh. My mind is blown. And now my wallet will also be. So we're going to go right off of this podcast and buy some stuff. Um, but, yeah, you guys, go check out Nico Bates. If you want to use the code Burley, please do. Uh, show these guys some love and go order some stuff. You can always hit them up. Uh, hit up. Who, who would we notify about like local shops that we want to see nico bates at well there's a contact on the site um uh, mm -hmm. so just yeah this will be the nico just type in nico fishing or nico helgramite you'll find the website it'll pop up right away um there's a, it just says contact button just contact it and um because it's a global site i mean it's going to ask you you know whether you're the u.s or a customer or sure. they are you know you know don't say that you're from like new zealand or something um because it'll go somewhere else you know, just, just be from North America and it'll come to me and then I'll, I'll take it from there. Awesome. All right. You guys heard them. So if you got any spots around you, local shops that you want to show some love to and get some Nico products in, then you can hit that contact button, but otherwise follow Nico Bates, check them out. They got cool social media. They're posting pictures of these awesome looking baits all the time. And thanks so much for hanging out with us. Another Thursday night is gone, but we've got another one coming up next week. So just come back. Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern. We'd love to see you here and talk to you in chat. And be sure to share the love, smash the like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and share the channel with your fishing friends so that we can keep growing this community and doing more awesome things. We appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for being with us tonight. Uh, Chaz, I think it's that time that you take us out. Check Took a swing at a wrecking ball and I prayed for my downfall on a way to reconcile cause in my heart it's not worthwhile it's a bloody battlefield where some go down others heal in the end it's all the same all you can do is play the game